Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, Kol Halo and La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baruch Hakodesh, which means all praises to Yahweh, is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world only calls Jesus Christ. Baruch Hakodesh means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. The only way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the, uh, our apostles and elders, a great millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And um, just going to touch on this little article right here, uh, uh, published by RT. It said, published time June 13th, edited uh, yesterday, June 14th. It says, scientists determine what God looks like for Americans. <laughs> Even in that self, man, it is a dumbass statement. But let, let, let's read a little bit of this. It says, what people envision God to look like varies broadly, depending upon demographics and politics. Whether God is male, female, black, white, young, or old is entirely subjective, and often our God looks a bit like we see ourselves, which the Bible gives clear and direct uh, uh, features of uh, uh, of the Most High Yahweh and of His Son Yahweh Shai, man. You know, matter of fact. Let's just get into it. Um, let's just start with this. This is Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, is a man of war. He's a masculine entity. Yahweh is his name. You understand? That's plain and in itself, man. <laughs> so that's that's that, 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 that hey, that's no discussion whether he's a male or female. You understand? He's a masculine spirit. That's plain and to the point. That's what the Bible says, man. Fuck with a person's uh, 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 their own uh, um, 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 envision, their own mind of what the Lord looks like. No, the Lord left a record, man. You see? Let's go on. This is uh Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. And it reads, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit the ancient of days been the most high Yahweh, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire man it said his head was like the pure wool baby you understand who who on this planet got woolly hair man let's check it out look at this look at this man <laughs> who hair grows like that you see there's no way around this man this is what the bible says give a damn about your opinion or what you think this is what the bible says man you see so it said it said his hair was like the uh, uh, uh the pure wool now bear with me this is saint john 14 verse 9 yahweh shah saith unto him him uh uh it was Philip, I think it was. Yep, verse 8. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Yahweh saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He do of the works believe me that i am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake man and yahweh shah is a spinning image of his father you see so it said that um yahweh the ancient of days had woolly hair man sitting upon that throne right we just read in john yahweh shah told philip that hey, if you see me, you seen the Father. Why? Because they, 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 they're the they're, uh, uh, they're spitting images of themselves, man. Roughly paraphrasing, you know, just like how a son would look like his father. Same as Yahweh shine the Most High. This is Revelation one and thirteen. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. 
clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with the golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, just like the fathers in uh, Daniel the seventh, as white as snow. You see, so he had white woolly hair. The wool uh, were white like wool represents the texture as white as snow represents the color, man. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. He had red eyes. You understand? From his anger that he's that he's coming with. And also he drank wine according to Genesis the 49th chapter. His eyes shall be red with wine, baby. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters, man. You see? So the same color as your feet is the same color as your face, man. It's the same color as the rest of your body. Because what John, John bowed down to him and, and what he's seeing, he look, he he's seeing his feet, man. He had the garment down to the foot. You see? Matter of fact, this is uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 10. Um, it's ten and five. It says, "Then I lifted up in my eye, I, I, it's like it. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphrates." Right? Then it says in, in in Revelation, he had that golden girdle. His body also was like the barrel, meaning what? He had a green garment on, man. You see? So he's seeing his body. When you see us out there on the highways and edges, what do you see, man? You see our head, our arms, and our and our feet, you know? Because if in the ancient world we would have sandals on, man, we would have that garment covering our body, man. So he had a green garment. And his face has the appearance of lightning. Meaning what? Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Surely wisdom maketh a man's face to shine. Moses' face was shining after he came out of the mount. You understand? But did, did, did that change the uh, uh, the fact that Moses was a so-called black man? Read, read. When it says that he put he put his, uh, I believe it's the third chapter. It might be the fourth chapter. The Lord told him to put his hand into his bosom, pull it out. His hand became leprous. He put it back in and brought it out again. And his hand was the, the, uh, uh, the same color as the rest of his flesh, man. Roughly paraphrasing. So the scriptures give 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 clear <laughs> indication of how the Lord looks, man. Him and his father. It said his body also was like the burrow, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire to go to those red eyes again, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude, man. So when you look at a, a, a burnished brass or polished brass, it, matter of fact, let's get it. Oh, let's get bronze because it's actually supposed to say bronze. <laughs> That's the spirit. Look at that, man. Look at that. You see? Our Lord was a dark skinned man. You see? So it's no way around this, man. You know? There's no way around this. That's what the scripture says. That's the record that uh, 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 the Lord left of his son, man. Matter of fact. This is uh, 1 John 5 and 10. It says, He that believeth on the Son of the Most High hath the witness in himself. Why? Because you believe in the Word. The Word is hey, hey, the Word is Yahweh Shah. John, the first chapter. The Word became flesh. It says, He that believeth on the Son of the Most High hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not the Most High hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that the Most High gave of his Son, man. You see? <laughs> and that's plain. So let's go back to this little dumbass article, man. So that, that, that clearly cuts or, 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 or what, what they envision the most how it looks like uh, when they look at themselves or, 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 or all that madness, man. 
You see? So let's read this again. What people envision the most how to look like varies broadly. It shouldn't because we just gave the scriptures. Depending upon demographics and politics, whether the most high is male, female, black, white, young or old is entirely subjective and often our power looks a bit like we see ourselves. However, the most commonly accepted image of God in literature and art, at least, remains that of an elderly white man. And that was just cut thoroughly, man. You see, so if the Bible says that he's a so-called black man, why is all these images put up as a so-called white man? And now that we're standing upon our feet, telling you people that the Most High and his son are so-called black men, now all the, now everybody talking about, well, color doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what his color is. Well, why did it matter when they all put that picture up in the first place, man? If color didn't matter, we wouldn't be looking at this pale, dog-haired faggot, man. It says a group of scientists in the U.S., however, were eager to determine if that visual is representative of how Americans, just over 70 percent of which are Christians, viewed their God. The study by a team of psychologists at the University of North Carolina published in the journal PLOS One is entitled The Faces of God in America revealing religious diversity across people in politics. The experts say they use reverse correlation to understand how a representative sample of American Christians visualize the face of God, which we argue is a indicative, indicative salaki, of how believers think about God's mind. They wrote, some 511 Americans were shown random pairs of faces and instructed to select the one they thought were the closest to their image of God. And this is the image that look, look, look at this, man. Look at, look, look at this pasty, pale bastard, man. In general, American Christians view God as a young Caucasian man with short hair, but that image also varies depending on ideologies and, per, and personal physical appearance. You see, and that, all that was just just cut, man. All that was just cut. The Bible gives a clear, <laughs> clear depiction of how our Lord looks, man. It says, for example, liberals generally view God as more feminine, bullshit, more African-American, so-called, because he's a dark-skinned man, and more loving than conservatives who generally saw their God as older, more intelligent, more powerful. All results suggest that there may not be a single answer for all believers. It is a single answer. If everybody believe in the word like they say they're supposed to, well, then they believe what the word said. That's the one single answer. You see? It says our results suggest that there may not be a single answer for all believers, even within the same religion. <laughs> the study said, in fact, it appears that when believers think of God, they perceive an image that adapts to their needs and it looks like them. You see? That adapts to their needs. That's why Paul said this, man. Uh, hold on, Salakia. I think it's, um, uh, I ain't gonna guess it. There it is. This is 2 Timothy 4 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is what, man? Teaching the truth directly and correctly, precept upon precept. The right, the correct way that you're supposed to teach this word. You see? But it says that they will not endure. They will not uh, uh, listen to sound doctrine. It says, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So just like that article said, man, people uh, 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 believe uh, 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 how God looks in, in, in his personality, you know, according to their own needs, man, according to their own beliefs. You see, that ain't what the scripture says, man. This is, um, is it first Peter or second Peter? You gotta be second. This is 2 Peter 1 and 19. He says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein to you do well that ye take heed, as into a light sh that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, man. You see? So it ain't no, well, I believe this. Well, no, I believe that. No, it's all one belief, man, according to this word. You understand? First Corinthians, the first chapter, the 10th verse, Paul said that we all should speak the same thing, having the same mind and the same judgment. You understand? It ain't no way in hell we all reading the same book and we all getting different understandings out of it, man. That's confusion. 
And the Lord is not the author of confusion as it is written. You see? This is Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, trust in Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shai with all thy heart. How do you trust in him? By believing in his word, man. You understand? By believing in men who's, who, who, who's giving you this word directly and correctly, man. Truthfully, sincerely. Not shunning to declare all the counsel unto you, man. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding, man. You see, these people lean into their own mind. You can't do that. This is Jeremiah 17 and 9. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it, man? So we don't. We can't lean upon our own mind, man. We can't lean upon this flesh box. You understand? Because when you lean upon your own mind, you're leaning upon your own flesh, man. And the flesh is corruptible. You got to lean upon the word of Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shai because that's incorruptible, man. I'm going to read this again, Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in, the, in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil, man. Now, I know, I know what that Bible says. Uh, you can't tell me different. No, no. You don't know what the scripture says, man. You see? There are men out here to teach you what the Bible say, man. But like Yahweh Shah said, man, hey, 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 uh, my sheep heareth my voice. You know? So let me just um, touch on another, uh, see if there's anything to touch else on. All right, then, because that's, that, that's pretty much about it, man, you know, because the mind is desperately wicked, man. You can't rely on your own mind. You got to rely on the word, you know, the word said that the, uh, it explained how he looked. You know, matter of fact, matter of fact, hey, call all y'all by Shami was shot. This is the book of uh, St. John 7 and verse 38. And this is in red, as you can see. It says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So you got to believe on the Lord according to what? The record that was left. The record that's left is what? These scriptures, man. You understand? So you got to believe on the word. Uh, you got to believe in the Lord according to the word, man. Not according to your own mind. According to what's written. Being interpreted correctly and directly. All praises be to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Lord willing, I hope this was edifying to you brothers and to you few sisters that watch. Shalom.